Hello. Lately I've been drawing landscapes with some other types of media, so I decided to go back to my favorite one, which is charcoal. And this is what I produced, this scene with some trees on a hill. I didn't put anything in particular here in the foreground, because I figured that this path and some grass and flowers would be enough to create some depth and distance. There's also a nice large mass of clouds in the background. So I'm going to be showing you how I did it. So let's get to it. First a few words about my tools. As usual uh, for drawing I mostly use charcoal pencils. These woodless charcoal pencils are soft one and medium one and I also use vine charcoal. For blending I use these tutilians which I make myself and the, there's a, a video about that if you want to watch that. I also use these brushes and for sketching I can use a graphite pencil but I can also use it for some shading and this is the vine charcoal that I was talking about. For erasing and drawing highlights I use this pencil eraser and a kneaded eraser which you can mold and shape according to your liking. Now let's get on with the drawing. The first thing as usual is the composition. So I'm using my graphite pencil to give myself a rough idea where everything's going to be, where I'm going to place the elements. And I decided to put the hill or the line of that hill around the half of my paper and slanting slightly to one, to one side. And I'm going to put some trees there. Right now I'm just uh, creating some rough shapes in the background which will later hopefully become trees and now I grabbed a vine charcoal stick and I'm going to shade that sky. Vine charcoal is much softer than the compressed charcoal in my charcoal pencils so even though it looks really dark and messy right now, it can actually be blended very smoothly and it can actually be made a lot lighter. And I'm using a piece of paper towel for blending. Now you can see that I didn't uh, shade the entire area evenly because I want these areas here to be lighter where the clouds will be but I still I'll still be using my erasers a lot to define the shape of those clouds so I just kept adding a little more of that line charcoal uh, where I felt that I needed more value and more contrast And I also used my brush a little bit for blending. Another thing that you can use for blending is white chalk or white charcoal. Because when you put it on top of charcoal, it actually, actually makes everything look smoother. Now here I started working a little bit on the trees and I decided to draw some branches just a few branches here and there 
before I start working on the canopies and the foliage. And if you've been watching my videos, you'll notice that I like thicker canopies, thicker foliage. I know that not all trees look like that, it's just that I, uh, I like it better that way. So I used the tortillion to blend that a little bit and then I started working on the canopy and the foliage. I am using a soft charcoal pencil, even though this charcoal in, in waterless charcoal pencils is all compressed charcoal and it's darker and it's a little more difficult to blend than the vine charcoal that I used on the sky. So I use a combination of a medium and a soft charcoal pencil. There's really not that much difference between these two pencils, it's just that uh, the medium one gives you a little more precision and the soft one can be smudged a little more easily, that's about it. So once I lay down uh, the initial foliage, I start to blend it with the tortillion because I want to make it darker and I want to give it more volume and density. And the thing is that when, when I uh, draw the foliage I just scribble a little bit trying to produce some texture and once I start blending it either with my tortillions or with the brushes not all of that texture will be removed, some of it will still stay there, some of that variation will still be there, so uh, it's better to do it that way than just to draw lines. Another way you could do it is just use some charcoal powder and cover that large area very quickly, but then I guess you wouldn't have any of that texture. But the thing is that right now it looks a little bit flat, so I'll have to add some darker areas here and there to, to be able to give that canopy more depth to make it look more 3D. Here you can see I grab my pencil eraser, which is a Kohino pencil eraser. It's an eraser, a regular rubber eraser and a pencil which can be sharpened. And I started to draw some edges of these clouds and then, then I decided I'm just not going to have enough contrast and I want the sky to be a little bit darker so I went over the upper area one more time with vine charcoal and I blended it and spread it, spread it around with a paper towel. And only after that I felt like I had enough contrast for these clouds to really stand out against the sky. And then I started working with my erasers. Of course naturally first I had to blend that in so that it looks a lot smoother. So anyway now I'm back to using that Kohino pencil eraser and hopefully now once I start working on these clouds they will stand out and their upper edge will be a lot more defined. That's one of the things that you'll often notice when drawing clouds uh, is that the upper edge of the cloud is often a lot cleaner and a lot more defined with a lot more contrast with the low, uh, than the lower one where there is less contrast uh, but I'm not trying to produce a clean edge everywhere I'm trying to produce a mixture of cleaner edges and uh, some softer and wispier edges here and there 
I'm trying to imitate the appearance of the clouds. So this large mass of clouds will be looming across the horizon, across that hill. But I can't just leave it like that. I need to I need to define its shape and structure. I need to make it a little more complex, a little more interesting. And I'm going to be using that, doing that using a combination of a regular pencil eraser and a kneaded eraser. And here in the top corner I just added some lighter clouds, which are a little bit less defined. Just to make the composition a little more balanced. So you can see that I'm breaking up that mass of clouds now into smaller shapes and trying to create some more detail there. If you're wondering uh, what I used for my reference, I didn't use one specific photo for my reference. I kind of studied a number of uh, photos and landscape, landscape paintings because I saw a number of landscape paintings with large clouds and some trees on the horizon and they seemed very simple but they looked very nice so I decided to try to produce something similar in charcoal except that I wanted more trees and more clouds and as for the foreground uh, for a while I was thinking about uh, putting some either some fallen branches or a fallen tree trunk uh, there in the foreground but eventually I decided against it and uh, just let the grass and the dirt path there so you can see the clouds are now mostly done and now I'm using that medium or rather this is the soft charcoal pencil to draw some of the darker areas and the reason why I'm doing that is so that the canopy wouldn't look flat and two-dimensional so the first thing I want to do is draw these branches darker especially uh, the portions which are just under the leaves because those portions will be getting a lot less light and then I want to shade the area around that also a lot darker. And then I want to add some darker areas in between the branches and inside that canopy to break up that mass of foliage into segments. break it up into five or six segments and these segments are further than consists of sm smaller segments but I can I don't re really need that much precision there I don't really need to plan all of that I had I can just go with the flow and randomly add some darker areas and then try to define these uh, clusters of leaves as I go along and then I can try to make these clusters of leaves look even more complex and more interesting by adding uh, some more scribbling on top of them to make it to create an illusion of detail. Now the bushes here, which are uh, 
below the tree, I'm gonna make these even darker, especially the lower part. Just so that it doesn't look too grainy, I, I'm going to soften that texture a little bit with a tutilium. But you'll see that I'll keep adding a little more here and there, and whenever I feel like I need more value. This is what the tree looks like now, and you can see that I'm pulling some highlights using my pencil eraser. I'm just trying to erase a little bit of charcoal here and there to make some of these leaves stand out a little more. so that some of these um, clusters of leaves are, are kind of popping up uh, from the rest of the canopy. So I'm just adding them randomly and if I feel like some of them stand out too much I just soften them a little bit with a brush. These small touches really add to the realism. And you can see that the canopy looks a lot more complex and a lot more realistic now. So now I'm going to use a kneaded eraser. And you can see that I'm trying to lift up almost all of the charcoal in certain areas because I want to create these lighter portions where it looks like uh, light is coming through uh, through the foliage. So I find that a kneaded eraser is better for this because it allows me to lift up the charcoal without smudging it. And now I'm moving on to the trees on the in the middle and on the right. I'm basically going to do the same thing. I'm just going to scribble a little bit, try to produce these irregular shapes that look like brown, uh, trees, canopies, foliage from a distance. I'm going to keep scribbling to produce a nice texture, and then I'm going to blend that a little bit and then I'm going to lose some of that texture but that's okay because I'm going to be adding some more on top as I always say when drawing landscapes and trees this process requires a little bit of patience but you have to take your time and enjoy it and it doesn't really take that much time and effort I personally think that Portraits are, are a lot more demanding and difficult because they require more focus and patience. With trees, you don't really have to worry about precision and likeness. As long as you make them look organic, you just have to keep in mind the general rules of drawing, the value, the contrast, light source, and things like that. And as long as you keep these things in mind, I think you'll be able to produce something that looks very realistic without actually putting in too much effort. For me, this is one of the easier drawings, I think, even though it looks pretty nice. Or at least I hope it will. So I did the trees here 
and these are a little bit darker I may go back in with my erasers to take away a little bit of the value or I may just leave them a little bit darker we'll see so you can see how nicely they stand out against the clouds and how nicely the clouds stand out against the rest of the sky it's very important to have a nice range of value to achieve those contrasts it's also very important to blend these uh, canopies so that they look more dense otherwise they'll just look a, like a bunch of dots and lines and you don't want that so I use my tutelians extensively and like I said I use tutelians which I make myself I just use a piece of paper and roll it and then secure it with a tape and if you want to see how I make these tutelians I'm going to put the link in the description if you want to check that out at the end of the video I will also put some links to some other landscapes I did in charcoal if you want to check those out and now I'm moving on to the foreground there's going to be a dearth bath a nice little dirt path here in the in the foreground leading up to us going down the slope I'm using the vine charcoal stick to draw some grass and not much of that texture will remain visible because I'll blend most of it in but some of it will remain Now the thing about grass is that when you draw grass it can be either very very complex or it can be very simple and very quick. And I think one of the things that you'll find is that grass can be made to look pretty realistic even without too much effort. All you have to do is make a few suggestions of blades of grass here and there and then you won't have to draw every single blade. So you just have to keep in mind that the grass that is closer to you is going to appear larger and taller and it's going to become smaller and less defined as you go further into the distance. But you don't have to cover all of it with your pencil strokes. You just have to create a few of these clumps here and there and a few suggestions will go a long way it will capture the attention of your eye and uh, create an illusion and here I'm also adding a few white dots by using my pencil eraser to suggest that there are some flowers there And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side as well. You can also see how I tried to make the path look uh, a little bit irregular, like it's winding in certain areas and like there's a little bit of grass here and there in the middle of that path. And I'm just doing the same thing which I did on the left side just adding a few blades of grass here and there trying to make that area look a little more interesting and adding some highlights on top and maybe a few flowers and maybe I can just use a black colored pencil to add a few more blades of grass which are a little, a little bit more defined here in the foreground and the drawing is almost done I'm gonna be 
removing this tape soon and spraying it with a fixative. Just a few strokes here and there. Here the drawing is finished and I'm going to sign it here in the lower left corner. You can see that I removed the tape and sprayed it with a little bit of fixative which tends to make it a little bit darker. So this is the finished drawing. I hope you like this scene. Don't forget to give me a like and I'm just moving the camera a little bit. Don't forget to give me a like, don't forget to comment, uh, let me know what you think, let me know if you if there's anything you would like to see me draw and maybe subscribe and click the notification icon. Also you can check out my other videos where I draw landscapes or trees. I also have some in pastel and colored pencil. That's it for now. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.